When I first got into tattooing, I was like a, I was a kid in a foster home. And I remember I was in juvenile hall and I saw this, this kid and he had all these tattoos all over, you know, like his neighborhood and he had a girl head and all this stuff, you know, and Maravilla. And I, I was just like amazed with his tattoos and I was like, hey, let me check these out. You know, he started telling me, yeah, you know, my homeboy did this. And I was like, how do you do it? It was you get a needle and wrap thread around it and dip it in India ink. And he goes, and also girls' mascara works, you know, and, uh, and then you just poke it in, you know. I got out of juvenile hall that afternoon, and that night, I, I remember I was in my room, in my bed, and I made a little tent in there with a flashlight and had my sister's mascara and the needle, and I did my first little tattoo right here. I saved it. I was so obsessed with tattooing, you know, I became like the neighborhood tattoo artist, and I was putting all the pachuco crosses, and all these tattoos on my hand I did when I was 12 years old. I was a troubled youth, you know, I was always the one that was going to juvenile hall and camp and, and youth authority, but I ended up in a youth authority in a lockup program for hardcore YAs. Their policy towards us was, as long as you guys don't kill each other, we'll let you do what you want. We got the plans for the tattoo machines, I remember from uh, Susanville Prison, and so we started making the tattoo machines, you know, and with the staff letting us tattoo, I got really good at it. In fact, some of those staff members would even come in my cell and let me tattoo them, you know? Eventually, they gave me a year time cut because they believed that I could get a job in a tattoo shop. So when I got out, I, I set up in my apartment. And at the same time, there was a tattoo shop in East LA called Good Time Charlie's. Jack Rudy told Ed Hardy about me, and Ed Hardy was, you know, we gotta get this guy working here because he could relate to these people, you know? I mean, it was a rough neighborhood, you know, and the, the tattoo guys, they were white, and they're in the middle of East L.A., and all these gangs everywhere, and you could tell right when you walk into that tattoo shop, there was like an uneasy relationship between the tattooers and those people because the workstations had like iron bars. Being that, that I had been locked up so much, all these gangs in L.A., you know, like all the, the hardest core guys were always in juvenile hall camp, youth authority, you know, and prison. So we all knew each other. I was cool with everybody, even my enemies. Fine Line started, you know, in prison. And uh, the idea was that as fine as the line you could make, the closer to realism you could get, you know, by doing a real fine line and shading off of that line. In prison, you would take a guitar string and you would s stick it through an eraser, a pencil eraser, and then roll it on a little piece of sandpaper, you know, you just roll it like that, and it would sharpen up perfect. And that's the needle that we used, you know, was, was a sharpened up guitar string. They figured a way to apply it to the professional thing because, you know, when you're uh, tattooing, you need multiple needles together in order for the ink to flow through the crevices. And that's how it flows out onto the skin when you're tattooing. If you have just a single needle, the ink just falls right off the needle, just blobs out. So as you're tattooing, the, the ink will fall out and some parts will go in the skin and other parts won't. They came up with the idea of getting a, a needle and extending it you know, out just a little bit from the other two needles so the ink still flowed and uh, you had that fine line. The other thing was using the gray shading you know, and no color. So you use different tones of gray, you water down the ink, or you evaporate the ink to make it darker. It's just like photography or anything else, you know? It's like you have talent for it, and then you learn more knowledge, and you apply that, and you get better. Mm -hmm.